Hey everybody, MUHerd37 here, and I have gotten uh, some requests, several of them, to do a little short tutorial here on how to set up uh, passenger flights uh, in Air Hauler 2. Now these passenger flights can be quite profitable. I've got a ton of uh, planes doing passenger flights right now. So you can see, I do mine Monday through Friday. I basically like, give my pilot Saturday and Sunday off, even though you don't really need to. I'm not obviously real people. But uh, as you can see, I have a ton of passenger flights uh, going on all the time. Well, Monday through Friday. All right, so let's see how we set this up here. First, you obviously are going to need one of your planes. And remember, it has to be in a passenger configuration. Now, I've got my uh, Piper Comanche 2 here. As you can see, it's in cargo, so we just need to change it over real quick. I just want an economy for this one, so I'll switch them all over to economy and go ahead and change it. Sometimes it doesn't change over uh, right away. Let's see if it did. Sometimes you'll need to like click on the job map or gets uh, it'll like update. It's like see here how it's not here. Comanche two. So I'll click like jobs map. Let's see if it updates some stuff over there. That's still not here. Usually that gets it done. It might have to shut it down uh, and restart it. All right. So see it doesn't want to come up right now. So I'll uh, shut it down, restart real quick. It should be up. All right. So I've restarted this thing. Let's make sure it came up. There we go, down here. Piper Comanche 2. All right, there we go. So now, obviously, uh, one other thing you're going to need, obviously, is pilots. You need to keep in mind uh, the pilots on here can only fly for eight straight hours. After that, they do have to get a rest. So I try to keep my plane in the air clo as close to 24 hours a day uh, as possible. So basically, for that, you're obviously going to need three pilots. When you're uh, having them depart, first off, they're going to depart from wherever the airplane is. Like right now, this plane is at Myrtle Beach, KMYR. But it doesn't have to go like from Myrtle Beach to say, like I'm going to do Philadelphia. It doesn't have to go to Philadelphia and straight back. You could go to say Myrtle Beach, Philadelphia, let's say Atlanta, and then back to Myrtle Beach if you wanted. But remember, you will ha uh, need to do that within eight hours for one pilot or you know if it's going to take over it will make you have an additional pilot ready as well although for uh, in this example we're just going to go to Philadelphia and right back alright so you're going to need to do a little research it actually took me a little while uh, to find exactly what route I wanted to make sure it was going to get as close to eight hours uh, as I could get and that's why I ended up uh, picking Philadelphia I was going to try Atlanta and some other places like that but it was going to give too much off time so I thought Philadelphia was a better choice all right, so when you're ready, we'll go ahead and click Add Sector. You can see it will be departing from Myrtle Beach because that's where it's located right now. All right, so ICAO code, just type in. Uh, if you don't know the name, you can always search for it right here. For me, like I said, Philadelphia, KPHL. This is also a, a nice way to find out exactly how much the opening cost is for your base, by the way. <laughs> Use that several times. So we'll select that. And it'll bring up this page. Something that has actually changed because this used to come up and be like around 150, 180. It starts off there and this is acting a little weird. So I'll put it all the way up and I'll, I'll pick like 300 bucks just to start off with. See, some of this isn't right because the higher up you'll go, obviously less people will want to take it. But for some reason, it's, it's not actually going down like it used to. I have no idea what's wrong with it. It used, it used to work perfectly normal, but it seems to want to, not to want to do that anymore. But I'll pick, eh, I hate how it wants to go by like 10 or whatever. All right, so I'll get it right to 300. And some of this doesn't seem to work as well. Like it says it's going to use 58 gallons, but it, it's actually ca calculating as $429. I don't think that's correct at all. Another good piece of information right is right here. Estimated travelers per day on route, 565 So if you get the right price, you're going to be able to fill up your plane as long as you can go up to 565 people a day and you need to come up here and select your time now being at Myrtle Beach uh, this is UTC time at Zulu time so I'm minus four hours so I like to start off on Mondays at 10 a.m. so it'll actually be 6 a.m. in Myrtle Beach kind of like you know a little I don't know if you call that red eye but get them out early and all you have to do is click here add sector now to get uh, a return, well, if you want, don't want to return right back to Myrtle Beach. Say if you want to go to Atlanta first, you would just hit click Add Sector and then do it. You know, 
what we just did and tell it to go to Atlanta and then to Myrtle Beach, just so on and so on. But I'm going to come right back, so I'm just going to right-click there and schedule a return sector. And then I'll keep the $300. One of the nice things when you do the click the return sector, well, even if you do the, uh, the ad sector that way, it'll select the earliest time that that thing can uh, come back on its return flight. And you'll see uh, all the same information. So I'll go ahead and click that. All right, so as you can see, it's going to take off on at 10 o'clock from Myrtle Beach. It'll arrive at 13.10, so about 3 hours, 10 minutes. It'll take 35 minutes uh, for this thing to turn around, get everybody un uh, unloaded and loaded back. And it'll return back at 16.54, so it's about 6 hours and 54 minutes, so just shy of 7 hours. Uh, so basically, this to get there and back, it's going to use up one pilot. Now, I want to... Uh, do this again obviously so let's go add sector again actually yeah go ahead and add sector again actually let me click off that I'm gonna click right here on this bottom one just to make sure so let's add sector again and this one's just gonna go to Philadelphia you can have it differently I have one of my planes that goes to leave Louisville first from Huntington then it goes to Cincinnati and then it has another pilot that takes it to Knoxville for her routes. So I'll go back. KPHL again. And it'll pick the earliest time that it can go up. I'll bring up the sector right here again. And we'll just do schedule return. All right, I was thinking there might be another way you can change time. I don't want to change the date and time, so I'll just click that bottom one again, add sector, because we can do it one more time before I won't have uh, enough time to get up there and back. So I'll just click through it again. All right, and then uh, schedule the return sector one last time. So we're taking off at 10, and once that thing will update again, we'll be here back at 7.54. So that plane is up in the air for all of, uh, just short of, what, two hours and six minutes uh, that it can be. So I think that's actually pretty good. I try to get it uh, up and back, uh, even if it's just short one, up and back like twice, within eight hours. That way we can get as much time as possible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this one, my first one, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this to other days. I like to fly him, like I said, Monday through Friday. So he's already on Monday. You can see that's grayed out. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You'll see it up will bring this. Don't worry about this because it, it says they don't sequence correctly. Don't worry about that. We will get those uh, in just a second. So select the second one, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I can't remember if you can click all these together and then right click and say, I don't think it will let you do that. So you can do it all at the same time. I think you have to go by, uh, do it by like this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sorry, somebody's beating on a wall over there. And here, here Monday, 2115, right click that. Other days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You'll notice this one's at 1 o'clock on a Tuesday. So we go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we'll do his five straight, or she, whoever it is. And then one last time, select to other days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right, and that's all you need to do. One thing I don't like is how you have to select the pilots. I wish I could just select a sector and just assign whoever I wanted, but it doesn't actually do that way. Here you have assigned crews and pilots. It'll tell you that we need three. And I'm going to select three people. Remember, these people have to have their typewriting for the plane as well. I forgot to tell you about that. You have to make sure that they can fly this plane. So let's, I'll select Ashton, Emma, and William. And boom, there it goes. It's all good. So at Monday at 10 a.m. Zulu time, they will start the flying. And I like to keep track. It'll show you one of the easy ways as well as to go to like your finance. 
in your ledger and just check and see exactly how much they're bringing in. Like I selected 300. Uh, if they, if it's a little, the ticket prices are too high. Like say only two people will go, so you'll notice your money is down. So just move your ticket prices down a little bit until you can get a full flight. And if it is full flight, move your ticket prices up until you don't fill up the plane. And then you can find your sweet spot uh, for the ticket prices. It's actually pretty easy. It takes a little bit of time to you know kind of track that stuff, but that'll uh, let you maximize your prices. Also, as you fly, let me see here. Your pilots, uh, let's see, skill assignments. So you have like fast, faster passenger boarding, uh, slot times relaxed, all kinds of stuff like this. Uh, there's another one here, like higher uh, passenger flight income. So actually start making more than what it was showing. So like if it was $300, let's say they brought in 900, but if when you start clicking that up, who actually bring in more than just 900 bucks. And you don't have to adjust your uh, ticket prices for that. It'll just uh, uh, automatically do it. And that's all there really is to it. Uh, mainly you just have to research your routes and make sure you can use the plane for the most amount of time, closest to 24 hours uh, to uh, just maximize the money from that plane. Because obviously that plane sitting on the ground is not making any money. That's about uh, all there is to it, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next flight.